I made a graphical OS from scratch, not Linux. Is that me, sucker? Okay. What the hell is this? This is my handmade operating system. I built it from the ground up in a series of videos, and so far it has a cell, a compiler, and some other stuff. It seemed cool to me at the start, but then I did the mistake of looking at what the OS Dev community has already made. <laughs> yeah, then you're like, oh shit. Oh shit. Oh, wait, look where I stopped. Wow, what a perfect stop that is. Holy. <laughs> oh. I always love when people know about Temple OS, but they don't know about Terry. Um, that always leads to some very interesting, um, very interesting, uh, interactions. Where like, hey, 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 let me, let me, let me tell you, let me, let me show you what, uh, what, what, uh, Terry thinks of the CIA. Uh, <laughs> Terry, uh, Terry is, uh, he was a very... A very, a very, what's the word? Um, mentally troubled person, I think is the best way to put it. Wow. Xorg Adventures with Mal. Okay, sure. So, what does ever? Oh no! <laughs> Where, oh no! Which cl uh, what what clip is this? What? <laughs> what clip is this? Rest in peace, Terry. Okay, we're being, we're being safe. Thank you, I appreciate that. Well, for that reason, I took the porting approach from very early on. I was using very minimal patches and followed Linux system call conventions and numbering. This made the Kavos kernel binary compatible with it, mm -hmm. to the point where I could literally copy an Ubuntu binary into it with no issues whatsoever. Sure. Most hobbyist OS's cross-compile third-party software mm -hmm. with various patches, which is nice for build customization, but inconvenient for me since mm -hmm. I wanted to stay that close to Linux. Right, A right. shortcut I quickly took was using Alpine and its package management. Why did I choose Alpine? Well, back then I was working on a package manager with a friend mm -hmm. and we were compiling with Muscle and I honestly really liked the way that it was laid out. Binaries linked against it were tiny, and it was overall a really good experience. Sure. Apart from it using Muscle, Alpine has repos with everything I needed, so it was really a perfect match. However, Xorg is a massive program, and requires a lot of process communications. Yeah, Xorg, Xorg does so much because it's from a time where... Software architecture wasn't exactly a... A, a, a big design concept. If Xorg was built today, it would have been far more modular. The problem is no one gives you about Xorg anymore and uh, on Linux, Wayland. And Linux is basically the entirety of Unix now, with the exception of macOS, which doesn't use Wayland anyway. Stuff to work properly. Which I guess there's the Sun stuff, but that'll probably end up doing something with Wayland somewhere anyway, or just die. <laughs> Obviously Which is basically stuff. doing anyway. All I had were Unix pipes, where you could basically write to one end, while someone else reads from the other end. Mm -hmm. As you can guess, that is definitely not enough for a full graphical server to run. No. There I was met with this fancy thing called Unix sockets. Sounds scary, right? Because uh -huh. it kinda is. Xorg basically opens one socket, while programs running on it connect to said socket, and sure. start sending sure. data back and forth. That data includes window position, scaling, and other stuff. Right. Thing is, it makes debugging difficult, and small mistakes cannot be detected, as programs send whatever Xorg-flavored garbage they want. <laughs> also, a lot of software depends on specific error codes being returned, as well as polling, which... I didn't realize there were that many error codes to deal so with. A lot of software Holy depends shit. On specific error codes being <laughs> returned, as well as polling, which I had just hackily implemented. After this monstrosity of an interface was at least working properly, 
I decided I was ready to test my luck. Mm -hmm. I installed Xorg from APK, Alpine's package manager, along with TWM, a really old and nostalgic window manager, which you will see later. With my excitement- Oh, he said TWM? I thought he said- No, TWM. That is, um, that is Tom's window manager. TWM is, if I recall correctly, the window manager... Wait, is it? No, no, that's- uh, Hold up. I'm getting some of these old ones confused. Is TWM the one that created the concept of virtual desktops on Linux? Um, or am I thinking of another one? This is the Wikipedia page for TWM. Um, oh, TWM is the standard one in the Xorg server. Right, that's what I'm thinking of. I tried booting. Wait, wait, what's on that desktop? Hold up, hold up, we gotta see. Oh, it's ugh. It's Windows. Ugh. Anything funny here, though? Half-Life based. Half-Life 2 based. CS2. Gary's mod. GTA 5. Uh, I'm not seeing anything really fun here. What? This is a fucking insane desktop. Like, it's one thing to use desktop icons. It's another thing to not want your desktop icons to cover anything. And then just put them around the edges of your screen. And I got to a black screen. Better than Even nothing. System call logs, polling just got stuck infinitely. In one way, I was happy that Xorg was actually using my frame buffer, mm -hmm. which I had to set up in such a way that it was properly exposed to user land, along with the resolution, color map, and other things. But I was still- I put them at the top of my screen and organized by color? What the fuck are you saying? <laughs> you organized them by color? <laughs> like like the the order of the rainbow like what what color ordering do we use here i have to know what the fuck are you even saying it looks nice i'm sure it does I've never heard anyone do this before. I found something old. Look, DMs. What did you find? Is that just a PlayStation 1? Is there nothing... Hold up. Is this just a PlayStation 1 and nothing special? Hold I, I'm actually not sure. Why is it rotated like that? That... Wait, is that... Wait, though... Oh my god, that stick is cooked! I never had a PS1. My, uh, I had a PS2 as my first console. It is very cooked. It looks like you fucking ate it. Pointed that nothing interesting was going on. The wind. In whatever. Or, uh, in the order of whatever there was the most color of, so I had all the blue ones on the left. So it's order by color, sorted by group size. The manager wasn't even booting. After digging my hands way too deep into Xorg source code, I found out that it used Unix signals in order to detect when the Xorg server was ready for clients to connect. What are those signal things, you may ask? When a process is running and it needs to be notified about something, it could be sent a signal. That signal stops the execution dead in its tracks and makes video. it handle Stop the quote-unquote problem. We are responsible for safely saving the process state, pushing the signal handler in and then fixing the mess it might have left. As you might have guessed, I'm making this sound easy although it really wasn't. I had to read into a lot of weird Linux quirks like system call reporting, interruptions, or the way it expects the stack to be afterwards. Mm -hmm. Once <clears throat> all of this was done, I hold, could... Hold, was he doing this on WSL? Or the way it expects the stack to be afterwards. 
Okay, Once sure. all of this was done, <clears throat> I could paint the screen different colors from an actual client. Wow! So, oh my god! Incredible! Could I? Whenever something goes well in this project, there's always a massive roadblock. Uh -huh. In this case, sometimes during signal delivery, the process <clears throat> state would be completely destroyed, resulting in it being killed. That happened randomly and so rarely that I couldn't debug it properly, as it always caught me by surprise. Uh -huh. Until one day, I was so annoyed and tired of it that I spent almost 10 hours straight looking into every corner of the code base for issues. After a lot of guesswork, I came across a spinlock acquisition that happened on a function responsible for translating virtual addresses to right. physical ones. Right, right, yeah, yeah, I know what that means. I not go too much into detail, but if it was called from very specific contexts and the lock was on a certain state, it mm. would completely vandalize the context that it ran inside. After okay. fixing that, I was finally able to get XI's to run. XI's! Isn't this awesome? Incredible. As cool as this is, look at how much I'm moving my mouse and how perfectly still this thing's eyes are. I see it's not it's not doing mouse <laughs> mouse handling properly then. This is because uh, mouse input events are not being handed over to the X server. Right. Internally, it tries to parse connected mice and keyboards using udev, but I decided to instead do the good old xorg.com file like we're in 1990. I defined the path of the mouse there. So no <clears throat> yeah, you have no idea how bad it would have been to use xorg back then. So, back in the 90s, you could actually kill your monitor using Xorg. Like, there were ways to misconfigure it that would actually kill your monitor. It's not- you can't do it now with, like, a modern LED. Um, but CRTs had a lot less in the way of hardware protections for doing something stupid. Um, yeah. So, if you want to go kill a CRT... Uh, try do a busted XOR config and see what happens. Dynamic parsing had to be done. So, after <coughs> implementing the FDEV protocol for the kernel, which was honestly a bit of a pain, the X server was finally. So, I see the guy that talks about blowing up speakers in the LKML, uh, LKML every year. I vaguely remember that story. I don't remember the. I, I don't think I've seen the email in a while. Happy and recognized our input. Now you're going to say, oh, Brody, you made a video on this and you forgot about it, which is very possible. <laughs> By the way, the only document describing FDEV is this plain text file dating back to 2011. This protocol hasn't changed much anyways. Well, that it's makes it like easy. now mice have 29 different buttons or besides. Or, wait. Vaguely remember, I watched your vid- exactly. Yeah. I knew I made a video on it. I don't remember it at all, though. Yo! Of course, me sucker. What is the video called? I don't remember. I'll make another video like this covering how it got full open SSL to run along with curl, keyboard input on xorg, uh -huh. pseudo terminals, a real terminal emulator, and finally all of them on a real hardware. Oh, ST! Wait. If you want to see that, subscribe so you are notified when it eventually drops. As always, well, everything for CavOS is open source and licensed under the GPL license. You can check it out on my GitHub. Yeah, go do that. my socials in case any of you care enough to stalk me there. And until the next one, stay safe, everyone. Well, that was fun. That was fun. I don't think I learned too much about what was going on. Um, but it was fun. I sent you the bag of milk video. You want to check it out? I think we'll do that. And then I reckon we'll end off the stream. Um, so I'll be back in just a second. And then we'll watch that one.